Four weeks later, have they changed their game and have they changed their approach coming into this tournament? Just as a pro yourself, Ryan, what has changed in those four weeks in terms of this game? And, and maybe just could be from a, a formation point of view, maybe a meta point of view, maybe even a personnel point of view in foot. Yeah, I'd say the items that have been released, um, more, often, more so recently, you've seen the, the new World Cup hero items that have been released. They enter the team. You've got Yaya Toure. You've got Lucio with an upgraded card. Cap Devia is good enough now, in my opinion, the best left back um, available for the players to select. So I say that changes. In terms of the meta, I'd say it's quite similar to the previous um, game week. We haven't had a patch that has completely changed um, the game since then. And on the flip side for Atlanta United, they have got quite the roster. Paolo Neto and Young they did come in too. This Atlanta side, this year, obviously, we had. Vinny did swap out $200,000 in prize earning Palanetto has had. He's been to World Cups. He's won EMLSs in his time. He could be in for a chance early on. Fancy the shot from that far out. Expect to see a few of those Travellers across tonight's action. It's a difficult one, isn't it, with that Traveller? Because you want to stand off and, and stop the through ball, but at the same time, you just at such risk of that shot coming in from, what, 30-plus yards out, and it could just cause so much damage. Yeah, we saw, especially last week with Rebel Leipzig, um, utilising the Travellers very, very often on the edge of the box. So, again, you have to watch out for the passes into the box, the step-overs, the angles for shots inside, and uh, the extra skill moves. But outside the box, you just you have to be as wary as well. well. If you are a Tex fan, keep an eye on... See the white side from left to right in this game, but the red player icon above any of... The foot item said that is Tex that is in control. His teammate Diogo with that yellow triangle. By the way, on the flip side, Palanetto, the captain of this Atlanta United team with that blue triangle and his teammate in Young. We did speak a lot about how good defensively Fnatic have been, but on the flip side, they do score goals, but Atlanta United, Ryan, they, they ship a lot of them. They conceded 11 goals last week, which I think is probably the highest of, of any team that did pick up points in the EA Sports Cup. Of course, this is the side of an SBQR or a, or a Blue United. Yeah, considering 11 is, normally if you're associating with that, you'd assume that they would be bottom. But again, they've scored a lot of goals, so you have to commend them going forward. They've done enough to, to be in the mix coming into this week as one of the teams that could advance into the knockout stages. But as I said earlier, they haven't started this game week the best. They, they lost their first game 2-0, albeit to the, the team in first place. But again, it's a, it's a start that they wouldn't have hoped for. Well, they picked up five points from 12 four weeks ago so far tonight. As you're right, the, to say there, Ryan, they did lose 2-0 in their last game. They have to come with a much more positive attitude for this game because they find themselves zero points from six in their first two games. It's not going to do them well at all. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of pressure on, on both of these teams. Of course, we know what's at stake in terms of wanting to progress in the group stage. But again, you're playing somebody that's level on points with you, albeit Atlanta have played a game extra because Fnatic did set out the first round. You don't want to drop points to... Hello. Oh, this could be it. Just enough there from Cathy, but you don't want to drop points to, to any team, of course, but especially a team that you're genuinely level on points with. So it's going to be tough for, for either team. I think that's why you might see some games that are, are very slow, very methodical. They're not going to rush too many things and make any mistakes until may, maybe later on in the game where they want to push forward, but... Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, if teams take their time this week. Fnatic opened up their account with a set piece four weeks ago. It was a moment of magic. From 25 yards out from Tex over a free kick. Keep an eye on any set piece to do win today. They have been deadly in those areas. David Ginola just wins. Throwing on this side of the pitch. A third of the game gone so far. We'll keep you up to date with the other game that is currently also underway in this round. Tex with R9 tries his best to outsmart the likes of Cafu and find a way round but they haven't really been able to get into the final for great feature Nola that's Palanetta they're still driving forward the idea was there of the chip it's just missing that final pass this game isn't it for both teams yeah that was a great bit of dribbling as you said there it's just that they couldn't get the pass into the the attacker it's good defending though from Fnatic they didn't press forward they sort of waited to see if there was going to be a pass over the top the, the L1 triangles this year are very, very effective, and the L1 R1 as well at reaching the defensive line, but this wasn't meant to be that time. Just in terms of formations, Ram, we saw obviously the five back quite popular at, at times across the last few weeks. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think Focus were doing that at some point. I think we even saw the likes of uh, 
even RB Leipzig for a period were, yeah. were rocking that. This game, it doesn't seem to be that way. You at Man City, what has been sort of your go-to formation? And has it changed coming into maybe next week? There's a lot of formations that you can use, of course, that are very effective this year. You, as you said, the 5-2-1-2 is very good. You've got the 4 triple two. Some teams also use the 4-4-2 defensive, which is very similar, just extra width. Um, but we tend to use the 4-3-2-1. A lot of teams use that as well. You have either the left back bombing forward or the right back just to offer that outlet when um, when pushing forward. But again, you can leave yourself susceptible. Maybe that's why some teams have conceded a lot of goals. It looks like Atlanta actually are using that. I'm not entirely sure, but when they were attacking, it looked as if their left back was pushing forward. 60 minutes gone here. Fnatic haven't found a way into the game yet. Yeah, maybe it can come right now. Zamprotta's being brave there. He's got two Fnatic plays. Just breathing down the back of his neck. He does end up with him. A goal kick for his team, but probably argue that in terms of the chances created, there hasn't really been any, to be honest, but it's been more in the side of Atlanta United so far in this game. I think they'll be happy now. Last few minutes of the first half, just to keep possession, just wait and see if there's an opportunity to push forward. If not, I'm almost certain they'll be happy to just go into to half time 0 0. But of course, we know about the last attacks in FIFA. They always Good. seem to lead to something. Mbappe well, gets fortunate with the bounce back there. And Kev Devia comes into that left back role this week. Half time here, 0 0. Not the most exciting half of FIFA, to be completely honest. And it's hard to really come away from the half with, with much to break down, other than you could even <laughs> argue that Atlanta United had half a chance. And that's about it. Yeah, there wasn't much to separate them at all. There wasn't really anything going forward for either team. I'm trying to think, have we did we see a goalkeeper make a save? I don't I don't think so. I'm not sure we did, but in the meantime, Ryan, whilst we'll we'll, we'll, we'll look back on this first half. Let's go to Carl Walker, who's with Team Falcons, who sit out in this round. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah, I am with Team Falcons and we're watching this game just behind us, Tex uh, and Diogo against Atlanta United. And it seems a cagey affair between the two. It just shows one mistake, it could cost you a vital place and some vital points, uh, Mr. Sari. Yeah, I think one mistake can kick you out of the group, to be honest. We're playing uh, a top tier teams, uh, especially the one in our group. So, and it's the best of one. So, if you can see it by a mistake, then you might get kicked out. But if you get it right and you score that vital goal, you can jump up as, as Fnatic could do now. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's see. Right, thank you. Right, uh, Brandon, let's get it back to you. I think the second half starting. Uh, Brandon, let's get it back to you. I think the second half starting. Thank you very much, Carl. Yeah, back on the way straight away. I believe there may have even been another goal in the opposite game across the pit. We'll give you the latest on that. Which way has it gone between Ducks and Riders? In the meantime... All eyes on this one. Fnatic looking to get underway in the second half. A great tackle from Vieira. Corner goes to Fnatic. And this might be the first corner we've seen across the whole game so far. And one thing I did warn everyone at home about, Ryan, was set pieces from Fnatic from this sort of distance. Let's see what they do from here. It's Kev De Villa over it. Ginola's come short. Watch that back post. There's a runner there. He went to go for the in-swinger. And it's another corner. Yeah, that is something actually that has been changed. The velocity of corners, the power, the accuracy. So that actually has been something. You're always trying to whip it into the near post, whether it's direct at goal or just whipped into a, a centre-back or an attacker that can get onto the ball as quick as possible at the near post. As they're trying here, and it was good defending. It was a great slide tackle as well from Atlanta United with Vieira to stop that attack. Well, let's check into the game next door. I said there was a goal that has been. Which way has it gone? It came just before half-time, and it's gone the way, I believe, of the Spanish Esports organisation, and what a penalty from a clever piece of skillery from... Down the middle. Pele goes down the middle, r oh, does score, and I believe... Oh, there was even an equaliser in this game. The Riders come straight down the other end, and Pele says, I'll score on the stroke of half-time. That's 1-1. One, one. That's a huge goal as well. Straight in response from conceding the penalty, they, they get back down the other end. Just before half-time, no better time to score. So it's equal in that game, the same as this one, as we see a build-up here from Fnatic. Jalzinho. Building for Fnatic now. They're still hunting for that first breakthrough in the game. But defensively, you wouldn't think this team conceded 11 goals last week, Ryan. They have looked OK so far until now. I've just cursed them. Mbappe and Tex doing what he does on the biggest of stages. Travella into the top corner. And Fnatic are alive and breathing in London. The moment the angle opened up there for the Travella, it's only one thing that's going to happen. 
I don't think they have enough time to move the goalkeeper. It was very sudden from the tackle. And it was the item of, of Mbappe to put it into the top corner. Travella again is very effective this year from those angles on the edge of the box. So not surprised to see that one go in. I literally just cursed in there. I said they were defending <laughs> yeah. so well. Well, this is how it stands at the moment in Group C with these goals going in and this group changing. Fnatic now on eight points. It puts Atlanta into a difficult position. They'll know what position they'll in. As I said, Ryan, if they get zero points from the first six available, it's not going to be looking good for the American football inside. Movie Star Riders currently drawing their game. They still sit top and Dux Gaming still very much in the conversation. And I think have a game in hand, of course, um, over the players or the teams above them. Watch out for the, the cross here. It's blocked by Cap de Villa. So they're technically in, a, in an advantageous position compared to the teams around them. They could even go first if they end up all level on points with Riders in first if all stays the same and they win their game in hand. So, yeah, it could be a... An uh, all-important game, this game for Fnatic. They'll be hoping that they can just defend, maybe slow the pace of this game down to, to the speed it was in the first half. So you see they've lost possession. We did joke around about them winning one nil game, Ryan, and <laughs> yeah. scraping out results. It, it might actually enough. be on the cards. Yeah, it might be enough. And they picked up five points from seven in game week one, which, as I said, was four weeks ago. A lot of time to work on and look back at the footage of the games they played. As you said, they only scored four goals and conceded four. They conceded sort of the fourth lowest goals in the competition. That's across 20 different teams in this EA Sports Cup. Now 25 minutes away from a 1-0 win. In this situation, Ryan, you know, your, your, your teammate shells, you're thinking, right, let's push for another goal just because you know how unsafe that 1-0 scoreline is. Or are you just saying, look, let's just try and possession this game out and, and, and try and get a 1-0? I think it's too too early in the game to try and just look to retain that one goal lead. We've seen in 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 many weeks gone by how um, it's it's easy to turn a lead around. So you kind of want to still push for the goal if you if the opportunity arises. You want to take the counter attack if it opens up. However, I wouldn't necessarily say you need to push bodies forward. Just be a bit more risk averse, but not too risk averse. You can maybe go towards a defensive formation, maybe 78th, 80th minute see how it goes from there but any time before that I think you just invite too much pressure for too long as we said just under a third left of this game as soon as we have updates for you in that ride is Ducks game in or if there has been any goals we'll give you the latest as it comes through it was 1-1 last time I saw that as you can see just watching over that group just a few yards behind the back of Atlanta United do sit team Falcons as it stands they do sit at the bottom of the table but you are right to say they have got a game in hand <coughs> It's a tight group, this one. We knew it <laughs> yeah, was tight coming into tight, today. Yeah. And, it, and we're lucky that the way these results are going, the storyline of this group is still there and it is still so open. Yeah, it, it definitely looks as if it's going to go down to the wire. No team, other than riders, I'd say, even though they're, they're drawing right now, but no team has completely pulled away yet. Well, the best thing about this is, Ryan, riders sit out of the next game. So if yeah. they do draw this or even lose the game, they're coming back into... Round four with yeah. potentially another team on 11 points. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I always find it hard coming back or playing after the break because you're playing a team that's just played a game, whereas you've sat out for a little bit. Maybe you don't practice in the, the practice um, arena or you just sit out, maybe analyse the games that are going on. So it's kind of tough. You don't know what to do. And sometimes you could get caught off guard. So for their sake, they'll be hoping that doesn't happen. But again, that game with between Riders and Ducks is huge. And Massive. Yeah. I mean, as you said, if, if Riders win it, Ryan, I would say they get themselves from 13 points. Yeah, I would say, for me, that's done. Say, say job done. Yeah, I say job done. Well, let's see if anything else comes through this game. Looks like Fnatic are ready to jump back into it. Palanetta, you can just see there on the, the right-hand side of your screen, making the final changes. It could be personnel, could be tactical changes. As they look to find a way back into the tie, they'll know how important these last 25 minutes are. And although we did say changes are happening, and here they come. It was a long pause. There must have been a, a lot of tactical variations loaded up in into the game just to see, just in case, on, on based on how the game's going. Great interception there. It looks there. as if is it Zidane that's come on, Eusebio that's come on, maybe even Fia Hernandez. Might have even been introduced late into this game. 20 minutes left. Fnatic looking to find their second to put it to bed. Sabio happy to get back and defend. They'll know exactly what great they need step. to do. That's a great step defending there. Just to 
to cut the angle down of the pass to stop it going through. Now they can push forward, a ball whipped in. Oh, wow, look at the time, look at the space for R9, but what a save from Van der Sar. Wow. Again, just proving why he is the man. You really want in the, in the sticks of your goal, he's been unbelievable. <laughs> To me, that's a, I thought it was a goal. I was ready to look away, thinking that it was already going to hit the back of the net. Cut he comes. Corner. Hello, back. Defending. What a chance that was, though, for Diogo. And again, you can't really you can't really sit there and say, what else could he have done? Yeah, it's true. He's done enough. I wonder if there was goalkeeper movement to try and cut the angle down or guess the right way. If so, of course, you have to give credit to, I believe it would be Neto moving the goalkeeper. But again, you just expect that to find the back of the net. Especially in that area of player of Nado Nazaro's quality. Speaking of him, he's back in possession again. Diogo looking for the one more pass to his teammate. He would have been Mbappe. Tex was in control of him. But again, Atlanta United just doing enough. Can they get out, though? With this fanatic press, they find themselves in 10 minutes left of round two. Remember, the storyline of today is only the top two teams in this group will be going through to the knockout stages at the start of next year in January. To the $250,000 2v2 tournament. Only eight teams from the 20 will make it into the knockout stages. This Hughes they managed to escape the press. This yeah, yeah, Torre just driving forward towards the back post. What a oh save again! Wow. Van der Sar. Wow, he's even brought him out there just to try and intercept that cross as well. You just kind of just have to, to hope for Fnatic it doesn't come back to bite them, but a counter attack could be on here. Alonetto tries his best to outsmart the defender, doesn't really get him anywhere, Pele. Controlled by Tex, what's that back post, Ginola's queuing up. But they know that they can just keep possession. Discipline, that's what you have to do now in these situations. There are options where they could go for goal, but it's just to be sensible unless it's clear cut. And Bappe, Tex makes it two! And just in one game of FIFA, they've scored 50% of the goals they scored four weeks ago. They look like a different side. A more disciplined side through Fnatic. And that's three points on the board. A big three points on the board. It's a huge goal there just to see out the game. Of course, you wouldn't expect there to be any sort of comeback possible with under five minutes left to play. Two goals up now for Fnatic. Again, discipline. I spoke about the way they started to build up there from the last 15 minutes. They didn't push forward too frequently unless there were open spaces for them to push into. And they made the most of that chance. Deserve a 2-0 leaders in this game. And on the flip side for Atlanta now, Ryan, yeah. I hate to say it, they've not got a break until round four. So they're back in. And who do they play in their next game? Well, they'll play Ducks Gaming, which is not going to be a, a nice tie at all. They have to take something from that next game or they're going to be zero points from nine going into yeah, a break. And I think I need to see the, the live table for now. But I believe if they lose this game, of course, depending on results as well, it's it's a very, very uphill battle for them to even get into us. But I know they're still only three points behind, but it's going to be tough running that. I think, as you said, for the next game against Ducks, they have to win. There's no, I, I don't think a draw's enough. I think they have to get three points. I mean, three minutes in this game, Ryan, four. Two goals for Atlanta, I'd be absolutely shocked if Atlanta were to find two goals. It's going to be a case of Fnatic just seeing this one out. But regardless, what a start for Tex and Diogo. Tex for both the goals. But nevertheless, Diogo playing a massive part. Just the pressing, look at that. Performance. Pressing as a unit. They're defending a lot better higher up the pitch than they did in the, in the first game week. You can just see that the way they cut the angles for the pass, one person presses, one person cuts the, the lane for the open pass. Yeah, defending very, very well higher up the pitch and, of course, deep into their half as well. As we said defensively, they've always been sound. It was just a case of could they add a few more goals to their tally? Two goals in their first opening game. He's the dream start. It's not been the dream start for Palonetto and Young. Finesse from distance, just over the bar. But it will be back to the drawing board. As things do not look pretty at all. They will sit joint bottom of this group. And Falcons have a game in hand. Referee conclude the game. Fnatic back amongst it in that top three.